Hello, my friends. Uh, Sean Sager, Director of Pastoral Care here at Grant Memorial Church. Uh, so glad that you are joining us for another installment of Psalms with Sean. Uh, week nine. Uh, in some ways, it's so hard to believe that so much time has passed. Uh, and yet here we, we are. We find ourselves in, in week number nine. Uh, very special welcome to those uh, to all of you who are joining in uh, with me today. Uh, special welcome to our Grant Memorial Church uh, family. Uh, also to to those who are tuning in from the Waverly Retirement Residence, uh, from Sterling House, uh, from Brightwater, uh, also from Linden Home Place and Linden Lake Terrace. And uh, once once again, I'm just uh, just so grateful that you are uh, watching and participating along together with me as we look into the book of Psalms. Uh, together. Uh, so today we're going to we're going to dive into Psalm chapter 7, uh, but before we do, uh, let us spend some time in prayer together. Uh, and once again, encourage you that, that I am praying, I'm inviting you to pray along with me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray and ask that you would guide our hearts today, uh, that you would guide us uh, by the Holy Spirit so that we could not miss uh, what you have for us in these words in Psalm chapter 7. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the words of, of David in these Psalms that we've been looking at and, and just the ways in which uh, he uh, once again highlights for, for us the different attributes of, of your character and who you are. I pray, Heavenly Father, that, that these words that we study today, that they would be practical to our lives, uh, that you would help us to connect these truths that we're learning about who you are uh, with our own lives. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Psalm chapter 7, let's, let's dive in and encourage you to, to get your copy of the scriptures and to turn uh, to Psalm chapter 7 and read along together uh, with me. So Psalm chapter 7, this is what it says. Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me, or they will tear me apart like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one to rescue me. Lord my God, if I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have repaid my ally with evil, or without cause have robbed my foe, then let me pursue, let my enemy pursue and overtake me. Let him trample my life to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. Arise, Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Awake, my God. Decree justice. Let the assembled peoples gather around you while you sit enthroned over them on high. Let the Lord judge the peoples. Vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High. Bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure, you, the righteous God, who probes minds and hearts. My shield is God most high, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons. He makes ready his flaming arrows. Who is ever pregnant with evil, conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit they have made. The trouble they cause recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their own heads. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praise of the name of the Lord Most High. Once again, so much uh, that we could unpack within these 17 verses of Psalm chapter 7. And in fact, uh, within these words, we see the continuation of the themes that we've seen in other Psalms, the previous Psalms that we've looked at in this uh, series. Um, we've discovered uh, 
to, to date, we discovered David's cry for justice in the face of his enemies, the evil that he has been experiencing around him, and God as the one and only source of rescue. There are a few different directions that we could go in today, but I would like us to focus our attention on two different parts of this psalm. In in fact, let's take a look at the beginning and the end of this psalm. So first up is the way that David begins this psalm here in chapter 7, and let's re-read verses 1 and 2. Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me, or they will tear me apart like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one to rescue me. I so appreciate how David begins this psalm before he gets too far into his call, his cry, his his prayer for justice. He acknowledges that the one true source of refuge is first and foremost God. How many times when we are faced with difficult circumstance, a crisis or a difficult decision, how many times do we first go into panic mode and try and figure out on our own before even thinking of inviting God into the situation that we are facing, the situation that we find ourselves in? It's interesting, isn't it, how our default setting is to try and sort it out on our own first, to take control or to try and take control of what is happening around us. And then if that fails, then we turn our attention to God almost as a last resort. Now, this might not be every time, but I know from my own experiences that sometimes God is not my first go-to for help. And not because I'm necessarily making a conscious effort to exclude him. It's just that in that moment, my default is to go it alone. A number of weeks ago, I shared with you the story of when I was a young boy and I was in the basement. I was supposed to be sleeping And I was looking for paint for my tree fort, and I ended up spilling that paint all over the basement floor. And my first instinct, once I realized the the scope of the trouble that I was in and how deep into trouble I was, my first instinct was to to call for my dad, rather scream for my dad, and, and he came and he came running. And I've been thinking about that story since I talked about it last. And even in the context of this psalm, Psalm chapter 7, you know, um, after that, not, not I guess just, just, just after that, but all throughout my childhood, in my teen years, in my young adult years, I always knew that if I really got into a tight spot, I knew that I could go and I could talk to my dad. I knew that if I ran into trouble, you know, with my academics or if I ran into trouble financially or if there is a, a project at home, um, a renovation project or something that was broken, I, my, my, first, and my first stop was to, was to call and to, and to talk to my dad. Um, and uh, as I approached my, my 30s and as my, after my first daughter was, daughter was born, uh, within a year of uh, Paige being born, my dad passed away from, from a heart attack. And I think one of the most difficult things for, for me uh, in processing that through was to realize that, that my dad wasn't there for me to, to call at a, at a moment's notice, uh, that I didn't have that same kind of, uh, of support, that same kind of go-to. And that's in, in those moments, and since then, I realized how much I, I took that for granted. And that's one of the things that I've appreciated about, about the psalm as well. Like David, the way that David goes to God first and declares him as his refuge. Um, sometimes we, we forget. Sometimes we lose sight. Sometimes we take for granted that God is there willing to walk alongside of us to be a help and support. Something happens to us, doesn't it? As we grow and mature, We learn to fend for ourselves, to take care of ourselves and try and limit the times that we place ourselves in situations that we 
need help to get out from under. Unfortunately, that also can translate to how we relate to God and those he has sent to help us. Let us be people who train ourselves. Let us be people who train our hearts to reach out to God first and foremost uh, as our refuge, to allow him to help us before we let our humanness, before we let our sinful nature jump in and take control. Well, I think that that's one of the things that that David is actually pointing out for us at the end of this psalm. So let's let's jump down to there and and take a look at verses 14 through to 17. It says, Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit that they have made. The trouble they caused recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their heads. I give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. You know, I think that one of the challenges of this psalm, and actually of the other psalms, is how important it is not to exclude ourselves from them. In other words, it's, it's all too easy to say, these words in Psalm chapter 7, they, they don't apply to me. They don't apply to us. They only apply to David and to his situation, to his enemies. Well, and maybe to those who are really evil, but, but not to us, not to me. As we've been discovering over the past few Psalms, especially in Psalm chapter 5 and Psalm chapter 6, That as loving and kind as God is, God is also holy and just. These attributes of God apply to everyone. And thankfully, because of the saving work of Jesus, as his followers, we've been declared righteousness. We've We've been declared righteous. But that does not mean that the struggle with our sinful nature is over. How many times do I go my own way, try and seize control for myself? And at the time, I might not see it as being, as it says in the psalm, being pregnant with evil. But my experience has been that when I go my own way, when I leave God out of the process of what is happening in my life, those actions conceive trouble. And those actions give birth to disillusionment. I really like how uh, King David lays this out here in in verse 14. uh, How he says this, Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. He's talking about a process. And that is so true with ourselves. We may not think of the things that we're doing on our own. We may not think and view them uh, as evil, But in the end, when we separate ourselves from God and go our own way, it conceives trouble and gives birth. When we experience that trouble, it can often give birth to disillusionment. You know, in connection with these words in Psalm chapter 7, I want to share with you uh, the words in the New Testament in James chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. And this is what it says there. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. One of the things that I take away from from this in relation to what we're looking at in Psalm chapter 7 is that in order to persevere, First and foremost, our refuge, we need to go to God himself. It continues on in James in verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. 
and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage us together. Let us be people that run toward the refuge that God provides. Let me, let us be people who release control of our lives and all the things around us to the Lordship of Jesus. Let me, let us be people who then in turn give thanks to God because of his righteousness and sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. I hope that these words in Psalm chapter 7 have been an encouragement to you today and a reminder that when we find ourselves in difficult circumstances, when we find ourselves in trouble, uh, to reach out to God first and foremost, um, it can be a difficult thing sometimes to remember. Because like I say, our, our sinful nature, we want to figure it out on our own. We, we grasp those things and try and control them. And, and, and oftentimes it's, it's all for naught. Uh, we end up creating more trouble for ourselves than if we would have just invited God into the process. Some people might say, well, what? how, how is that going to help? You know, God has this amazing way of giving us wisdom when we need and when we ask for it. God has this way of intervening into our lives and the situations when we call upon him because he loves us. And one of the important things to know about love is that it cannot be forced, right? Like love in part is defined by choice. So God doesn't force those things on us, but he so eagerly waits for us to reach out to him to allow him to to help us, to be the support, to give us wisdom that that we need. He sees the bigger picture. We only see what what, what it was in front of us. Sometimes Sometimes we're happy to walk with the flashlight, lighting up the few steps in front of us when God's got a big giant spotlight that he wants to bring to give us perspective of what's going on. And so just like to, to encourage you uh, in and through those words uh, today. But before we, we wrap things up, uh, let, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, forgive us for the times that we go on our own. Heavenly Father, we often allow ourselves to be, be led by fear as opposed to being led by your spirit of love and truth. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this reminder in Psalm chapter 7 that that our first step should be to reach out to you as the true source of our refuge, Heavenly Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, for the people who are watching this video. I pray that regardless of their circumstance, uh, they may be experiencing trouble. They may have a difficult decision that, that they're trying to process I pray, Heavenly Father, that in this very moment that they are watching, I pray that you would help them to know in a very real and powerful way that your love and grace is there to walk together with them if they would only reach out and ask for it. So, Heavenly Father, I pray your blessing upon us. I pray that as we prepare our hearts for for next week, as we look at Psalm chapter 8, I pray that you prepare our hearts for that as well. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, friends, if there's there's any way that I can be a help and support, if you would like somebody to talk to, do not hesitate to reach out and and give me give me a call. The number will be on on the screen. Uh, and uh, if you have any other other comments uh, that you would that you would like to to let me know of things that you've been learning and growing in as we've been looking at these psalms, don't hesitate uh, to call and uh, and talk to me about that, or even leave me a voicemail uh, if uh, if I'm unable to to answer your call. Uh, God's blessing to you uh, this week. Till next week. <music>